Hey everybody, we're going to take a look today at a real quick and easy way to get access to a very rich panel country level data set from the World Bank and put it into R and getting it ready to analyze. So that data source is going to be the world development indicators from the World Bank uh, and the package that we're going to use in R is the WDI package. So before we get too far here, you've got R opened up and we're going to go install packages and then it is case sensitive WDI. So go ahead and start with that. Um, and then in case you're not familiar with it, let's take a quick look at that world development indicator site from the World Bank. So you're going to want to go to the way uh, data.worldbank.org and it's going to take you here and like I said hundreds of variables known as indicators here uh, across multiple years for every country right so lots and lots of great data to play around with whether you have a particular assignment research project you're working on or you just want data in R to play around with so if we click on the browse by indicator this gives us a good idea of the, the breadth of information here. So grouped by category, like I said, hundreds of variables here, uh, whether you're looking at social indicators, economic indicators, environmental indicators, it's all there. So let's imagine just for our example here that we wanna look at say a simple two variable data set relating a climate variable, say CO2 emissions, uh, and an economic variable, say per capita GDP. So this, there's lots of other ways to do this. By the way, there's at least a half dozen other packages in R uh, that will give you similar results to this. Uh, and I'll be honest, this is the one that I've kind of latched onto, probably because it's most familiar and that it looks the most like what I'm used to doing in Stata with the WB open data package in Stata. Um, but so just be aware there's other maybe better ways of doing this um, but this is the way I would handle it so this is the variable we want right so we click on it here and all we really want out of this information on the World Bank site is the code that they use to denote this variable which is going to be here in the address line so if we copy that so en.atm.co2e.pc that. And let's just go back into R. So I've already installed that package. And I'm just going to paste this, or it's not done yet, but I'm just going to paste this here in the command line. And then we go back to the data site, browse by indicator, and we want to go get the other variables that we want to want to be using here. So down here in economy and growth, we've got per capita GDP in current US dollars. And again, other ways of doing this, but for my money, I know exactly what I'm going to be getting here. So let's go ahead and copy that back into R and put it side by side here. So now we have the codes. Now we just have to build the command around them. Right? And so what I would probably recommend is coming up with a name for the data frame that we're going to create. I'm doing this as an example. So let's just call this example. So the result of my command is going to create this data frame called example and the command that we're going to call up is again from that WDI package. And now in our parentheses, we want to tell the command which indicators to bring in. So we're going to go indicator equals C and then parentheses. We want our list of indicators and this could obviously be as many as you as you want, and we're going to want to put those in quotes and separated by a comma. And we could go ahead and stop here and put that end parenthesis. We could also indicate within that command uh, which years we want to get. The default is from 1960 to the most recently uh, available year. And then there's also this command, or this option, I should say, where we can say extra equals true. So if we don't do this, we will just get the 
column of country names, the column of years, and then the variables uh, for each year and for each country. And that may be all that we want. The extra information is going to include regional data, uh, assigning each country to the region uh, for what, uh, where it resides. Uh, and that could be useful to create dummy variables, etc. And we'll see what, what else is in there. So let's go ahead and hit enter, and this will take a minute or two to pull up. We're back. We got the data ready to go. Uh, so we have our data frame up here with our 16,000 some odd observations. Click on the little spreadsheet. We get our view here. Uh, and as advertised, we have these aggregates as well as our country specific outcomes year by year from 1960 up to hypothetically 2020 uh, with some missing observations thrown in there. Uh, and then those extra variables included this region identifier, the capital, uh, and longitude and latitude, uh, which is the center of the country. That'll be useful if we do uh, a mapping uh, exercise, uh, which will be a, another video later on. Uh, but now we can kind of get things ready to analyze here. And a couple things to notice uh, with the, the default data that comes from that world development indicators is the names of the variables are those codes, right? So the en.atm.co2e.pc, well, that's our CO2 per capita. That's a lot to deal with, right? So it'd be nice if we could change those names into something a little bit simpler, uh, likewise for GDP here. The other thing to notice is that they have these automatically generated descriptive variable labels, which is something we'd like to take advantage of. So before we get too much further here, uh, I suggest that we go ahead and attach this data. So our, attach the name of the data frame. Uh, that way, we don't have to refer to that data frame every time we want to pull out a specific variable. Uh, then we can do uh, just a quick summary. So if we go summary, the name of the data frame, that'll give us the summary statistics of all of our columns here, just to make sure everything looks like we expect it to. Everything seems to be in order. Uh, and then let's get to those name changes. So we're going to use the uh, command here, names, easy enough, you would think. There's a lot of places we can, we can go wrong here. Uh, so let's see if I can do this on the first try. So we'll go names, the name of the data frame example, and then in brackets, the same thing, names, data frame example. And then we put equals equals, and then in quotes, the old name. So we're going to get this right. So for the CO2, it's the en.atm dot c o two e dot p c i'm already glad i'm going to change this and then we want that variable to take on this new name so put the little left arrow there and in quotes let's just call it co2 let's see how this goes hey we got it so now the name of the column here is co2 and then we want to do the same thing with the gdp column there uh, so we can now do something like summary CO2, and there it, there it is. Uh, a lot easier to refer to those uh, single variables. Okay. The last little bit here uh, is to utilize those variable labels, right? So we're going to be using the, the package EXPSS, so call up that library, assuming you've already installed that, so install that packages expss and then the command within that package is going to be use labels right and we can use this as a prefix for most any base r command including regressions but most useful in plots and graphs so your audience can see exactly what those variables are that they're looking at so let's point this in the direction of the data frame that we're using so in our case example here and then just for example with our example data. Uh, let's do a little scatter plot. So let's plot CO2 as our y variable as a function of GDP, which unfortunately I have not renamed. So it's going to be ny.gdp.pcap.cd. We should get a nice little graph with the axes containing the variable labels rather than the rather less descriptive variable names. So you're off and running at this point. Um, lots of stuff 
we're going to be able to do here. Um, but now you've got the data to play with. So hopefully this was helpful and we'll see you in the follow-up in a little while. Thanks. Bye.